Hey all, I hope you are doing well. So welcome once again to my channel and I have come back with another video on Lambda. So it's regarding Lambda event source mapping where we will be adding Kinesis data stream as a trigger. So uh, we have already discussed in our previous uh, previous tutorial where we were adding SQS event source, uh, SQS as an event source trigger. And uh, from that setup, what it was happening the lambda component which is the esm event source mapping it's going to read those uh, messages or records from the sqs uh, queue and will trigger your function so in this case what happens is in kinesis data streams you will find shards okay and in the shards uh, there there will be uh, messages that would be published and there would be uh, and your lambda service would be reading through each of those shards or messages and it will be triggering your function. So if you see this for simplicity or for simple uh, understanding, so if you find this serverless land page here, it was published by me. So you will find that here what I have done is I'm using a Kinesis data stream and a Lambda. So this Lambda over here will be reading from the shards and uh, in the shards of the kind of this specific data stream. And in the Kinesis data stream, the messages are again published with the help of another Lambda function. So I am producing or pushing the messages to the data stream from a Lambda and I am consuming it again from another Lambda. So this is the specific use case. You will find more information about Kinesis. These services are extensively serverless and streaming uh, platform basically. So here from different data source, that, uh, that will be able to capture and send the data. There will be multiple uh, sources that would send their data to Amazon Kinesis data stream. And the data would be streamed accordingly and it would be present in those shards or partitions you can consider in the Kinesis uh, data streams. And you can have different consumers. So it can be a Lambda function, it can be a data analytics, uh, which it will be for different purpose. And there would be a Kinesis, uh, Kinesis data firehose and other, other uh, framework or custom applications you can consume. So typical use case of Kinesis is streaming of log or event data. So the, the service that provides you with this specific service provides you with this feature that you can actually push those data and store it for a period of 24 hours to 7 days, the retention period. And accordingly, you will you can have your consumers consume those events and further process as per your use case. Okay, so various customers actually of AWS utilizes this uh, Kinesis data stream as per this public documentation you will find. So coming back to our tutorial again here. So this is basically a SAM template and uh, using uh, i will do what i will simply go and click on this launch stack uh, button over here to have the infra ready in my account and i will change the region to us east one which is not virginia scroll down I'll click on next and uh, give a meaningful name here Click on next, next, and if I scroll down again, I will click this three checkbox, and then submit. So the creation is in progress. So resource creation is initiated. If you see the cloud formation uh, stack here. So, the, so these are the events that's actually following. Let's further refresh, create complete, create complete. Okay, so the creation is in progress. And close it, the other tab. And here you will find that the taste data stream in the North Virginia region is up and active. Yeah, the data stream is ready. I will also quickly check my Lambda functions. So you see here, uh, two Lambda functions are available. So if I go to the producer code and on a separate tab, I will just open the consumer code. 
So what does the producer function do, does? So if I go here, so in the environment variable, if you uh, see the stack here that I have used, the Kinesis data stream is used as an environment variable. Yeah, the Kinesis stream. This is referring to the Kinesis stream name, which is basically our Kinesis stream, this one, the guy created over here. And uh, this one is the producer. And but it does what? It creates a Kinesis client and it puts the data to the stream. Okay, this is put to stream uh, method that put the data to the stream. And this is the handler function. So handler does what? It uh, receives uh, the it, it performs certain uh, operations here. So it's random random way it's generating a property value and a timestamp and a property ID. Okay, and that is used to set the value set uh, set the push the data to the stream, and this is forming the payload. Okay, property timestamp and property ID, and this is the response that we are supposed to get from the Kinesis if we execute it. Okay, and from the consumer end, if you see, it simply uh, iterates over the events or the records, the array of the records that it receives. Okay, and prints it. So I will go over here and I will click on test. So I will click on test here. I have created the test event and it successfully posted. Okay. Coming to here, if I go to the monitor section, click on logs, view CloudWatch logs. So once you view the CloudWatch logs over here, you will observe that the function got triggered. Yeah, if I scroll down, you'll see this is the data. Okay. So you will find an init start, that is the initialization of the container of the runtime instance, and then the static initialization code, which is loading function, then start request, then the data that has that was sent to the stream. Uh, it, it gets converted into its best 64 format. It further decodes it and end request and then followed by report. Okay. And this is how the invocation takes place uh, and it works. So if I further click on multiple tests, so four or five times or more than that, you will find, so property is the random value you are getting right here. So you will find those data in the CloudWatch log stream you will find multiple invocation of the function has taken place and since this container was or the instance was already warm it has processed all those data you can see here from the top to the bottom okay so in this way it works so certain parameters that you can possibly check metrics that you can check at the lambda end for such a scenario is definitely the invocations throttles and if there are any iterator age so generally uh, things come up that whenever you're using a kinesis data stream and a function event source lambda function event source mapping setup uh, so there can be an issue with an increase in the iterator age okay and increase in the errors and throttles etc different things can take place so what happens is lambda reads those streams, forms, uh, re reads those uh, events from the streams, forms an array of stream, array of uh, records or events, and then push it to the function for invocation, send it to your function for the invocation. So sometimes it happens that there is a lag between the time at which the data has been pushed, the data is being pushed, and the current data which your function is reading. So there can be this time difference, which leads to an increase in the iterator age metric, you will find. Okay. Uh, there are other parameters as well that one should take care. So if, so this is the trigger, if you see this Kinesis trigger, which is enabled. So there are different parameters which can, you can use, utilize in order to tune your uh, throughput of the function. Okay. So concurrent batch per shards. So these features are available like batch size. 
batch size you can uh, utilize so what the lambda service will do so if say for example there are 100 or 200 records in the kinesis data stream so it will form a batch of 100 if you specify 100 if you specify 10 it's gonna be 10 okay and uh, and then it will send it to your function for invocation coming to provide it it's not uh, crossing the 6 MB limit coming to the batch window batch window is the time that you specify that this is the time that lambda should wait and then uh, gather the events gather those records forms a batch forms an event and then send it to a function for invocation then comes concurrent batches per shard concurrent batches per shard it's basically uh, the parallelization factor so uh, <clears throat> this specific setup what you can do is in a shard if you uh, if uh, you specify that the concurrent uh, the parallelization factor you are considering as two then and if you have provided two partition keys in your data then what happens is two function instance can reach simultaneously uh, from that specific data stream from that shard okay two other uh, things that you can specifically try to de de definitely try out is maximum age of record and retry attempts so if retry attempts is minus one and maximum age of record is minus one so it's gonna wait for indefinite period of time and it will perform retry in case your function is returning an error so configuring uh, so polling and batching streams so uh, as i was saying about the parallelization factor if you set to two and there are for example 100 shards so you can have a maximum concurrent execution invocations of 200 at max okay and uh, regarding the parameters yeah i was talking about this one so event source these are the various options that you can configure in your event source mapping one is the batch size the number of records that you send to function that can go up to 10000 okay and uh, payload limit definitely taken to be consideration of 6 mb then comes the batch window it specifies the maximum amount of time to gather records before invoking the function in seconds okay so in seconds uh, it it's uh, it specifies that this is the time you should wait then uh, two uh, other, the other things that comes up here is the starting position so if you specify that the starting position of your event source mapping is going to be either a latest or trim horizon or a timestamp so it's basically the internally the service will try to read from the latest data if it, you have configured latest it process all the new records that are added to the stream okay and stream horizon means from the beginning it process from all the records that are available in the stream from the beginning of time or the, the last data that was available which didn't got uh, expired or which was retained the last data that got retained by the stream okay and then at a timestamp it process records starting from a specific timestamp and it's from the specific time it reads and reads and uh, invokes your function okay there are other parameters like on failure destination so you can configure a standard uh, sqsq or an sns topic in case there are any failed invocations that are taking place so lambda will do what it will discard the batch of records and will send it to the on the configured on failure destinations okay after it has exhausted all retries then come the retry attempts so in case your function invocation is failing with an error so what happens lambda will perform the retries as per the number of retries that you have configured okay and uh, it returns an error this doesn't apply to the service error or throttles that to be kept in mind so in case you are getting a throttle or any if in case you're in 500 error that you're getting then retry attempts are not uh, exhausted and another example another options that are uh, that there are multiple options basically so another thing that you can consider is the maximum age of record it is the maximum age of record that the lambda sends to your function so if you specify the maximum age of record to be say for example 10 minutes so it's gonna wait for so it's it can at max send a record of age of 10 minutes so after 10 minutes if even if the function fails to process it in case there are any uh, on failure destination you have configured 
uh, that would be sent to that or the message can even be dropped then comes the concurrent batches per shard or provisioned uh, or basically the parallelization factor that i was talking about and mm, yeah that's that's all so the other features that you can possibly have is the filtering of the event stream uh, of the kinesis events so in case uh, there are specific value and you want only those specific data to be processed then at then if you come up here at the consumer end you can you can possibly add here in this additional you can add a filter criteria that, that has to be a valid json format so lambda will process if any one of the filters are met and it will be sent okay so that's how the things gonna work here in this case and yeah that's all from my end for today uh let me know if you have any queries or question in the comment section and feel free to like share and subscribe have a great day ahead cheers bye